us will have a low level or borderline B12 levels. Why that happens? Because now we have moved to everything polished. You need a polished rice, you need a white rice, where the grains which were polished down. So we feel that that bright yellow color is the one which is going to bring in good nutrients. No, what we are doing is the good nutrients are getting lost in the fibers which are being polished. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Now, we were advised, even in Alzheimer's, there is a link to obesity. There is a link to hypertriglyceridemia. We were advised not to take much of cholesterol. You will be surprised, there are studies where they have found linoleic acid conjugated butter, the plain butter, especially which is available in national cows, our Indian cows, in cows of Indian origin, is enriched with linoleic acid and that helps prevent Alzheimer's. The other aspect is vitamin D. In a tropical country like India, we have vitamin D deficiency. We all know the exposure to sunlight is going to give enough amount of vitamin D to us. But what has happened to us is because of many companies who have advertised their sunscreen products, we use SPF 30, SPF 45. I don't know whether it has gone beyond them. So these are the preliminary things which contribute <coughs> to such diseases. Now, lifestyle changes, we should include micronutrients in our diet. All the micronutrients we are supposed to get in our diet, vitamins have to be optimally taken. Pesticides, we should avoid these pesticides. Even simple washing procedure, a repetitive washing procedure can avoid these pesticides. Aluminium, do you use any vessels made of aluminium? We don't use. Many times we don't use aluminium, right? Pressure cooker. How about the aluminium foil what you get wrapped? Even one of my colleagues, I used to always tell her, hey, don't drink this in aluminium foil. It is detrimental to your health. Don't listen because it's easy to carry, right? But that hot stuff what you are keeping in the aluminium foil is going to damage. You are also going to get affected, not immediately, but it's a slow process which you may not realize and people don't follow that. And uh, in any of the restaurants when you get packages, all the food material is packed in aluminium and we don't realize that. We never realize that we are consuming something which is toxic. So I always believe let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. This was told by hypocrites. So it doesn't mean that you have to consume medicine to the volume of food. It's the other way around. What I always feel is when our ancient people, they have researched too many things, they have kept them in two places. One, they have made it as holy. They have kept it in temples. So you have to consume. Tulsi, kept in temples. So you will consume a little amount of it. Again, the dose decides where it is kept. Whether at kitchen or at temple. So a small dose of Tulsi will be sufficient and that is only advisable so it is kept at temple. Whereas the other ingredients are kept at kitchen. So our forefathers, rather our grandmothers were very well organized they are the people, so when, our, when we are talking about neuroprotection and when today's research, the modern research, when it is being done, what we find out is all these adverse effects have happened there with all the newer drugs. <coughs> but we were using, we are using those drugs to prevent such nerve damage. So one cannot forget turmeric. Can you? I always prefer using the name of turmeric instead of using the name of curcumin. Morning when uh, Lachke sir's lecture was there, I was just 
some of the procedures are standardized but i was just going through the procedures sulfuric acid is added and then extracted we never add sulfuric acid in our kitchen but we had methods to extract they say curcumin is carcinogenic our method of extraction didn't allow excess of curcumin to enter our system when do you add curcumin i mean turmeric oil afterwards you are going to add what you are going to add if it is a curry you will add water right so we have that procedure right do you have that procedure polarity based extraction so where it is extracted first oil it's by non polar agent so the non polar agent what we used first was oil oil followed by which we added water so all the constituents which are supposed to be there in haldi went into our system in a optimal level we all know the anti inflammatory properties antiseptic and antibacterial properties of turmeric along with that it de detoxifies the liver balances the blood cholesterol level fights allergies and that's why even now in winters we add a little of haldi in the milk and drink in the night so to prevent allergies and boost immunity so these are some of the traditional effects of turmeric now they have done a study using plant animals these animals were spontaneously alzheimers they are prone to produce plaques where when they have treated it with turmeric they found that the number of plaques gets decreased they have found that there is a decrease in the oxidative damage even the amyloid pathology can get reversed by means of use of curcumin they have also given direct injection of curcumin where they have found the plaque levels have actually had decreased and further new formation of plaques were completely prevented so you will see that the curcumin and the turmeric in many of the process of the pathology of the alzheimer's disease whatever we have seen all these places it finds its own mechanism and it acts there so there is an anti inflammation and also antioxidant effect of curcumin you can see that what is the dose of it 160 parts per million so that minute quantity we don't add kgs of curcumin in we don't add kgs of turmeric in but a minute quantity is sufficient to decrease the neuroinflammatory process and arrest the neuritic plaques and they have found when they have compared with vitamin e they found that ros is getting neutralized more potent than the vitamin e in a patient with alzheimer's <coughs> disease they have given 4 grams per day but for a prevention 160 ppm is also sufficient for a neuroprotective effect that's what is they have found so this is the scientific evidence they have found in south asian population you know what is south asian we we indian population they have found 4.4 fold lower incidence of alzheimer's disease we know that we are the persons who extensively use turmeric and that is the reason suppose in western countries at the age of 85 there is one in three in our country it is going to be four fold less that means one in 12 at the age of 85 so curcumin naturally has that effect on the various targets of alzheimer's so these are the targets in the beta amyloid pathway and also in the oxidative stress pathway where curcumin was found to be effective the next ingredient again comes from kitchen ginger so again these are the effects of ginger it has anti amyloidogenic it ameliorates the Alzheimer's disease by means of cis LT1 R inhibition, attenuates neuroinflammation, and promotes cognitive functions. So these are the other promising herbs. I'm not going into the details of 
all the things. Why I am talking on this aspect is, when we started before two years, the Alzheimer's research in this college, then we were also targeting only, we were just testing the shallow waters only by acetylcholine esterase inhibition as a target. Whereas there are numerous targets where our principles, whatever the pharmacognostic aspects of drugs are there, they, were, they are found to be very well active, but we have not explored. What I am talking about is the papers of 2014 and 2015. Still now there is, they are in phase 2 or phase 3, the drugs, and then with lots of failures, whereas more promising, curcumin has entered the clinical trials, they are in phase 3 of clinical trials. But unfortunately, as earlier told, it's not from Indian country. The patent is filed by a foreigner. Whereas we have all these herbs to work with. So I always give a homework. So we have the take home message here. Researchers, you start revisiting the concepts of natural medicine. We have so many drugs which are involved, which have this targets, they can be useful and I always believe in a holistic approach. Why you want to cut out, why you want to narrow down, why you want to go into a small molecule and check what is its effect. Your senocytes were not working in that fashion. Now also they are taking it as a decoction. Similarly, many drugs are available which are taken as whole medicine. So it's not needed that you go into extraction procedures, go into minute molecules and check for their effect. But you can go in a holistic approach. For others, go for preventive medicines. Some of the effects, say if you stop using, like before 2-3 years, people were taking tea in that plastic cups. Now they have stopped using it, right? So at least that awareness, if my lecture has brought about in you, that is very happy for me. And decrease the stress. Somehow, with some people like Namdeh sir, I have learned how to decrease the stress, okay? And uh, decrease the stress, at what cost? What cost we are doing all this, okay? Our health is supposed, not supposed to be the cost, right? So decrease the stress, do some lifestyle mod modification. The NMD receptor, when it is repeatedly stimulated, there is going to be excited toxicity. Excited toxicity again leads to Alzheimer's disease. So again, NMD receptors get stimulated. Glutamergic receptors, you know, monosodium glutamate, they add in place. You just can't stop with one. What are you doing? Just repeatedly. It's for repetitive action, right? NMD receptor. So you are repeatedly having it. You just can't stop with one. Your receptors are stimulated. And you are prone to take more. And it is going to cause excitotoxicity. This can cause a neuronal damage. So it's high time that we bring about preventive medicine and lifestyle modification and wish you all a happy and healthy living. So this is my Alzheimer's research team. Dr. Satinarayan, he was the one who started with the research of Alzheimer's. He worked on Brahmi, the Gritta of Brahmi. And Mrs. Sadhana Ranari and Madhuri Shela, those two are his students, so I happily borrow them for doing my work. And Mr. Kiran Dawle, he is doing, he's the faculty member and he is also doing PhD. I happily borrowed his slides, in fact. And these two are the people, Adaga Patil and Svarpita Das, they had established a model in the department last year. And Ravina, Tejal and Siddharth, they are working in this field, in this present year. So the other acknowledgement goes to Team QIP. Dr. Namdev sir, he's very cool. Whenever I tell something, sir, this has to be done. He will do just that. <laughs> so <laughs> now I have learned that I should also be cool like him. Professor Jim Zamre, uh, last QIP, few of you were there, 2015. He conducted in a very organized man uh, manner. I could like get many things out of him, like how organized it should be. Dr. Gopal Bihani, he was very helpful in every step of organizing all my PG and PhD students, not only in the Department of Pharmacology, but also the Department of Pharmacology. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, madam, whether there will be a stress to 
HP axis will be cause for the diabetes? For sure. They have uh, started with the diabetes only. Whenever this HP axis stress has been stimulated, this slide in fact is from a diabetes presentation what I have taken. So all the metabolic diseases have this HP axis. Stress is the prominent phenomenon. If, if anyone is a diabetic patient, if you see the blood pressure level, sorry, blood sugar level over a period of time, and when they are in the face of stress, you will always know the 